What's really amazing here is how down to the wire this all was. I mean, Trump tried to pull his typical delay, delay, delay move, and it almost worked. Because in a week and a half, Republicans take control of the House, and they would have almost certainly put the kibosh on this entire thing. But tonight, just over an hour ago, the House Ways and Means Committee voted along party lines to release Trump's tax returns from 2015 to 2020. Now, the actual process of releasing them may take a few days. The committee is going to put out its report with its analysis, but it's also going to put out Trump's raw tax returns from 2015 to 2020, which, as Trump said, are big and they are beautiful. Or so he says. They just have to redact all of the social security numbers and personally identifiable information first, because that is how much detail we, are, we the public, are going to be getting here. So nitty gritty that the committee has to redact the social security numbers. Now, I know we are very much in the throes of other ginormous Trump scandals. Today is literally the meat in the sandwich between the bread of yesterday's final January 6th committee hearing and tomorrow when they release their full report. But I mean, after seven years, the country is finally going to see Trump's taxes. Moments ago, Democrats from the committee addressed the media to explain their vote. And from that, we've already gotten a huge new revelation about Trump's taxes. The reason the committee wanted Trump's taxes in the first place was to make sure the IRS was handling them properly. In 1977, after the Nixon tax scandal, Congress passed a law requiring all presidents to have their taxes undergo a mandatory audit by the IRS. We now know that when President Trump became President Trump, that somehow, that audit didn't happen. In the case of the Trump years, uh, there was only one time when the mandatory audit was triggered, and that was when Chairman Neal wrote a letter. But actually, none of the examinations during those years were ever completed. And in 2018, 2019, and 2020, the uh, start of this uh, examination wasn't even begun until after Trump left office. Joining us now is Congressman Dan Kildee, Democrat of Michigan, who sits on the Ways and Means Committee. Congressman Kildee, thanks for making time for us tonight. I know you were behind closed doors up until just a few moments ago. What can you tell us about the timing of this mandatory audit that all presidents are supposed to undergo? Well, part of the problem with the, uh, the fact that it's a policy of the IRS and not codified in law is that it's up to the IRS to determine when and how they will conduct this sort of an audit. And what we know now, of course, after examining all these documents, is that the audits were never completed when it came to President Trump. And as Representative Chu just noted uh, on the air, um, it wasn't until Chairman Neal on April 3rd of 2019 sent the letter requesting these documents under Section 6103, the authority that we have to get access to the documents. It wasn't until then, and it was that very day, that an audit was actually initiated. But no audits from 2015 all the way through today, no audits of the president of President Trump's taxes have ever been completed, and very few were even tagged for audit until after, in fact, none were tagged for audit until after we began this process of trying to ascertain these documents. Clearly, the IRS failed to conduct the audit of the President of the United States. Clearly, this President's taxes are a matter of public interest in the sense that he, is the, he was the President of the United States with unique authority that no other person has. The reason that we asked for these returns was to determine whether we need to strengthen this aspect of, of American law, of the American tax code. And clearly, after examining the, the audits that we looked at, or I'm sorry, the tax returns that we looked at, and the report of the Joint Committee on Taxation and the Ways and Means staff, it was clear that we need to follow through with legislation. No documents make the argument stronger for the need for us to codify this in law and strengthen the mandatory audit program than an examination of those tax returns. And that's why it was so important that we felt that they needed to be forwarded to the House of Representatives, which makes them public, in order to take that step. I got to ask, having no idea what the answer to this is, the, Trump's tax return were such an object of debate. They were so much in the news media. How did the IRS forget that they had a mandatory audit of the presidential tax returns? I mean, do you, is there politics involved here? Do you think there's something b bigger at play than just uh, omission? 
It's hard to say we know that this was a failure at the IRS. There's no question about that. How that came to pass is another question I think obviously people will speculate about. I mean, it is the case that the president of the United States sits atop the federal government. One might speculate that there could have been influence. Maybe not. But one of the reasons that we felt like it's important to codify this is that we don't want to leave it up to somebody sitting in the IRS, an employee of the federal government, deciding that they should initiate an audit of the president of the United States. We think that ought to be done by operation of law and not left up to a person who indirectly or directly reports to that very same president of the United States. That obviously doesn't make sense, and that's one of the reasons that we're anxious to move forward on legislation. I think the it's other the purpose, thing— It's the purpose we ask for all of this in the first place, is to try to see whether this is working and how bad, if it is bad, how bad it is, to correct it. And, of course— We've come to the conclusion that this is worse than many of us expected. I didn't expect there would be no audits initiated. I was, sh I was shocked to see that. I think the other thing that confuses people is that President Trump said for a while that the reason he could not release his tax returns is because they were under audit. How does that factor into all of this? Was that a, a different that would, I'm assuming that's a different audit him as a personal citizen versus this mandatory presidential audit. But perhaps you can clear that up because he was asserting that well before any audits apparently actually started being started happening. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, the president as an individual may have been under audit the way lots of Americans come under audit. And he had been previously under audit, but he was not under the mandatory audit, which we believe needs to be done on a particular timeline. I mean, there's no excuse, for example, that any audit of the president, of President Trump, whether it began in 2015 or afterward, None of them have been completed, not one. Uh, so we don't want to leave ourselves in a situation where it's up to the IRS to decide to audit him and up to the IRS to fight with the president of the United States over the conditions of that auditing process. Uh, the mandatory audit of the president and the vice president of the United States ought to be codified in law and strengthened so that it has to happen, and it has to happen on our timeline, not in a situation where the president then can simply delay, 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 and obfuscate, which has obviously been a tactic that he's used throughout his entire business career. We can't let that happen when it's the president of the United States with, un with incredible authority to affect policy and to affect his own fortunes. Can I ask, because we're talking about delay and because the clock is very much ticking down to the end of the year, the, the, the Ways and Means Committee received these uh, tax returns last month. Today is the day that there's actually been a debate and vote about whether to release them. What explains the gap between when the committee first got them and the vote happening today? And when do you think the public will actually see the returns? Will it be this week? It will be. It'll be as soon as we can get the redactions done. The Republican and Democratic staff are working together to make sure that we identify that personally identifiable information that should not be released. That's being done even as we speak. But the reason that we're just acting now is that we were just able, as a result of the Supreme Court decision in November, November 22nd, we were just able to get access to the documents. It takes some time to go through these voluminous returns and to prepare reports so that we can inform ourselves on the, uh, ourselves on the decision. But the reason it's taken so long, just to be clear, isn't because we wanted to wait till the end of this calendar year, the end of this term. It's because this case was tied up in the courts. We won four different cases in three separate courts, ending with the Supreme Court under Justice Roberts, determining that we were correct and our authority to seek these documents. I don't believe in wasting a single day in Congress. Even if it's the, one of the last days of a Congress, we still have an obligation to continue to do our job. Now, the question is whether or not we can get legislation enacted into the president's desk so that it becomes law. And another question is whether Republicans will join us in this. They, they may have objected to the release of these documents. I think it was important because it's the important context to support the need for the legislation. But if they're willing to say, look, they still believe that, that we ought to codify the mandatory auditing program, then let's do that. Let's do that in a bipartisan way. It's going to be a great test of how allegiant they are going to be to the former president. But, you know, big, beautiful tax returns. 
They're a source of controversy in the modern day. Democratic Congressman Dan Kildee of Michigan, member of the Ways and Means Committee. Congressman Kildee, thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Alex.